I'm Tori. Stop fighting me. And he's Jack And I'm Lucy. Hunter is seven. I don't want to be alive anymore. River is six. What are you doing? Good. Ah, ouch. Ouch. The main issue with River is. River. His violent temper. Yeah, he's very violent. <laughs> Now he's picking up heavier objects, and I'm afraid. Don't, River. Put that down now. Put it down. Put it down. You don't play with hot iron. Put it down. Hunter is hyperactive. Hunter. He throws fits. Oh, dear! You're not a big, dry, whiny baby! He bites. Don't, don't bite me. He hits. Hey, Hunter! He just is nonstop. Aggressive. I don't care. It's not funny. Let me go. Sit down. Oh dear, we got problems. I own two companies. One is a recording studio. I can work up to 60 to 70 hours a week. Basically, I take care of the kids 24 hours a day, so that's my life. Seems like Mum's raising the boys here. I think Lucy sometimes has it easier. How do you figure? You don't have it hard. I mean. Oh my God, what are you, nuts? Get your bogus ass up and start hopping. Hunter, watch your language. Heck, hell, diarrhea, poopy. That's disgusting. These parents should be doing something about that. I have a thick and weenie in my weenie. You're an idiot. You two are so stupid, I swear to God. Weenie. You guys are stupid. How are your kids going to have respect for you? You've got no respect for them. Don't even kick me. I <laughs> Why are these parents this? not disciplining their boys? You know what a timeout is, right? No. no. There's no discipline in this house because nothing works. If you throw that, I'm going to smack your butt. All these empty threats and bribes. Your kids don't believe you. It's just getting really bad. I don't want to go sh shopping anymore. Corey wants to do stuff on the weekends. I just say, forget it. Go without me because I'm just so embarrassed. Please, please just come. We really need you. Yeah, you're right. You guys do need my help because this is totally unacceptable. I'm on my way. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Jo. Hi. Nice to meet you, Lucy. Hi. Come on in. When Jo first came in, she had this look in her eye, like, Lucy, I'm not here to chit chat or be your friend. I'm going to be your warden. Where are the boys? The boys are in here. What's your name? Rev, why are you doing that? Be nice. As soon as I met the young boys, they decided to attack me. Why, why are you punching That's me? That's not nice. When River started attacking Joe, I just wanted to die. I hit it in the play with some my hand. What are their names? That's River and that's Hunter. River and Hunter. Yeah. So you've obviously got issues that need to be addressed. Oh, very much so. And we will get to the bottom of those, trust me. But today I, I need to look. So. Okay, do you want me to give you a tour of the house first? Yeah, that'd be okay. Lovely. I don't like Dildo. Here's there, right? I don't know yeah, stop it. R Rev, River, no. And we went upstairs and the boys were just going wild. <clears throat> stop that, now. River, River, stop it, Rev, no. River, stop it. Those are gifts. Oh, your privates one day. You don't say that, it's rude. River. So after getting punched, I thought, what next? And then the boy started throwing balls at me. River! All right. River, stop it. I visited a few families stop. and been targeted, and this was one of those families. We need to beat up that lady. No, you don't. I batted off a ball that came my way, and as I walked down the staircase, I braced myself. No, you don't. Thinking that I was going to have a big bouncy ball hit me in the back of the head. River! That's wrong. I realized I was going to have to duck and dive a lot on this job. Be a that lady on the wing. River, do not <laughs> talk that way. I've dealt with plenty of kids that have had potty mouths, but these boys were certainly, let's say, creative. Do you know why I'm here, River? Yeah, the spit. The spit. Oh. These kids do know the difference between right and wrong behavior, but nothing's been reinforced. But there are no boundaries because it's not being backed up by discipline. River, you don't do that. Hey, I'm sorry. Does it seem disrespectful? But I, I'm very sorry. 
Mum's desperate. She's totally lost control of dealing with the boys. And on top of it all, she's mentally exhausted. All right, well, what would you normally be doing today? Well, I was attempting to do their homework. Okay, well, I'll let you continue to do that then. Okay. Hey, guys, we have to do homework now. Homework time could have been a lot calmer. Wait, what is this? This is what a five looks like right there. <laughs> it's look like chicken scratch. <laughs> what is this supposed to be? Edgy. It's not, it's horrible. You know, you guys make the homework last longer because you take mm. so darn long. For Mum, it's all about rushing the homework and getting it done. Babe, you're wasting my time. Look, look at that writing, it's horrible. Shirt. You were an idiot. Come on, did, I'm sure. We've been on this page for 50 hours, come on. Mum loses her patience. Do your homework, enough. And keeping them engaged seems to be a real problem. Listen, we're not playing with toys I right now. Know, you... After watching Mum attempt to wrangle the boys into doing their homework, I wanted Dad to come home soon so that I could see if he did a better job in keeping the boys in line. <laughs> Later that afternoon, Corrie came home. Joe Frost, pleased to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Hi. Thank you for coming. How have the boys been today? They're not on their best behaviour, that's for sure. Lucy told him how the kids had behaved and Mum had asked Corrie to put River into a timeout. Let's go in the, let's go in the room for a timeout. If you're not going to do it, let's go in the room. Do not grab me there, River. I want to help! You're not helping. Do not scratch me. River didn't want to go in and started to hit his dad. Stop now. Stop it. Stop. Let me go. And there was this full-blown fight happening between Curry and his younger son. Stop it. Was I really seeing this? I mean, could it get any worse? Stop it, Riff. Stop! River and his dad had been fighting for almost an hour, and River had completely trashed the room. But when Cory demanded that River pick up his mess, that's when things got really disgusting. Are you ready to clean, back, clean this room up? No, but... You're not going to come out? River, you're, now you're picking your nose? That's disgusting. Do not! How <laughs> dare you! Let me Stop go. it! You're, you're hurting me. You're going back in the room. Mom. And you're going to clean that mess up. Stop it, River. Get up. Let me go! Be happy to if you stop kicking me. Timeouts don't serve anything but trouble for this family. You don't kick me. Instead, it just validates how hostile each member are to one another. Coming out of this room. It serves no purpose but a row in the house. Let go of that. Stop. 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 Riv. Ah. River, you're pissing me off. This is why I'll just lay on, I'll just lay down with them and I'll hold them because this will be nonstop. All, all day. Bart. I don't know what is in his head that he does that. It just makes me look bad as a father. This whole episode, and um, take a look, your son's just scratched all your neck out. So what got achieved here? Nothing. Like that I feel nothing. River, don't even think about River, it. River, she's here to help us. Why would you hit her? I'll tell you that tomorrow. River has a strong personality, but he's been given an enormous amount of power and control. He actually doesn't know how to deal with that in a mature way because he's too young. I think Dad's zoned out. I think Dad's just resigned to the fact that he can't deal with anything anymore and he's detached himself. Come on, let's go. We're going up to bed now. Emotionally, he's, he's, he's cut off. He's been able to just detach. And you're going to get your pajamas on. Let's go. Lay down! Get in bed! Get in bed! I'm done. Lay down. Corey, get up here now! Hunter, get in bed. I can't hold him anymore. I believe that Corey is fully aware that if he doesn't change the way he's thinking and the way he's behaving, that his children are going to be the sacrifice. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I mean, I don't know. I, I just, I, I can't say anything, and they don't listen. There's nothing I can do. I, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm sure there's probably maybe something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do anymore. Having seen enough for the day, 
It was time for me to go because the quicker I could leave, the quicker I could come back to sit down with his family and really discuss the severity of the issues that needed to be addressed. The first thing I want to talk to you about is your boys. Their behaviour is disgusting. Yesterday, I was kicked, punched, spat at. They're cussing and swearing. It was just an absolute nightmare. I mean, a nightmare. I'm seeing things being broken, things being thrown. They've got no respect for their home. But it doesn't surprise me, because they've got no respect for the pair of you. They've got no respect for anybody who's in it. So why should they even respect their surroundings? Well, I think I'm probably more to blame with that, because I can't handle their behavior. And, you know, I do bribe them with things. Look at the price you're paying for it. You're not in charge. I mean, let's face it, you're not in charge. Which brings me to the next point, discipline. Discipline is totally ineffective in this house. Nothing is followed through. You undermine one another. They come at you aggressively and you pin them down aggressively. You're grabbing them by the ankle. I don't know what else to do. Homework. It's done with impatience. Yeah, it is done with impatience. And I will sit here for two, three hours trying to get them to, to do homework, and they won't. If I had another parent here, obviously, we could each get help. To me, it's like, OK, you got to get this done and take it When she to does school. their homework, I'm not here. I, she, it's done before I get home. Even if he's home, he'll sit on the couch. And I'm doing both boys, and he sees me dealing with it, and nothing's done. This is not about who did what. This is about you together, you know? I'm talking to you both as parents, together. The boys feel the resentment. They're caught in the middle. Dad, you detach and remove yourself from the situation because just choosing to do what feeds you leaves you in a place where you're not dealing with what needs to be addressed at home. And that causes the hostility that grows between the pair of you. They need you. They need their father. You need to be present. So we're not giving up. No. So we're ready for some hard work? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. When I arrived the next day, the first thing that I wanted to address was that these boys are not held accountable for what they do. Consequences for misbehaviour, and I feel reward when they're behaving well. So I came up with an idea to do just that. So what we have... Are some smiley balls here. Okay. Mum and Dad, you hold the bags that have the large amount of balls in there. When they behave themselves, they gain a ball, and when they don't, they lose one. And based upon the amount of balls that they have in their fishbowl, they're then given privileges to do the things that they want to so that it's not taken for granted. As you get more, Mum and Dad are going to allow you to do the things that you want to do. On a ball, I have to be good. These balls are to work for you guys. Right, but the focus for these boys is for them actually adding them to their fishbowl. I think with the privileged balls, what Joe's trying to teach us is that if you're gonna get something in life, you have to work for it. With the privileged balls being set up for consequences, for misbehavior, it was really important now to lay down these rules so the boys would know exactly what was expected of them. What's being placed up here are rules behavior that we don't want to see, otherwise it will equal discipline. First one that's going up here. Not doing as you are told. Yeah. What's the second one here? Name calling. Swearing, not listening, talking back. Anything that's aggressive, that's striking out, will result in immediate discipline. I don't like the house laws. I just don't. Because if you choose to do them, you're going to end up with discipline. Because of what? Do you want to be doing what with them? We want to be doing fun things. We want to be having fun. We want to be able to go places that we can all enjoy and have a good time. Yeah, but Dad never has a good time with us because it's always something to come here. It's all he cares about. Curry, he's looking at you. What do you have to say? And his dad just looked at him empty. 
And he had an opportunity to turn around and say to his son, yeah, we're going to make some changes, son. Excuse me, boys, one moment. Corey, come, come with me, please. I had to take him into the bedroom and talk to him about these situations, and I needed to do it away from the kids. Right now, you look like a 13-year-old. You have one shot at being able to turn around and tell your boy that, you know what, it's not all I care about. No, don't walk away from me. And don't walk away from this. Because your kids need you. They're going to bring more into your life than you ever imagined. I was actually really pissed. I don't want people to see me in this light. I've been hiding all my life. And here is a time. Now, there's a chance millions of people could see this. All you're thinking about is yourself. You are selfish. And now I am cross with you, because there are two kids I'm not licensed selfish. No, state. I know you're right. I understand that. Then stand up and take responsibility for what you chose to have in your life. It's a bloody blessing that you have two kids. And you can't answer them when they turn around and talk to you? I've never heard that out of his mouth before. No, no, no. Didn't feel good. He needs to grow up. He needs to recognize his responsibilities, and he needs to address those for his sake, for his boy's sake, for his family's sake. And he needs to start now. Are you in or are you out? I'm in. All right, then go and be in. After my stern talk with Dad, they saw that things were going to change, and they were bound to act up sooner or later. And sure enough, when Hunter was refused a snack, he started to trash the guest room. What is going on? Hunter, why did you do this? This is not acceptable. You made me mad. Hey, Hunter, when we all leave this room, I expect that this room gets put back how it's supposed to. I don't believe in animations. It's too heavy. It was crucial that Hunter realize that he would be punished for his behavior. And once he realized that he wasn't going to be let off the hook, he had no choice but to clean up that room. This is hard. Oh, why don't we do this? Dad! That's better. That's better. Because you chose to break the rules, you will be doing time out in this room now. Uh, so you will be here for seven minutes. I hate time out. OK, you can go and explain why he was placed in time out. Okay. All right? And then for him to apologize, hugs and kisses. Okay. All right, and then he's ball. So he sat in time out for seven minutes, but at the end of the day, he misbehaved. So he still was going to lose a privilege ball. Are you ready to apologize to me now? OK, look at me and say, Mommy, I'm sorry. Mommy. Good boy. OK, come give me a hug. Before Joe came, the timeouts didn't really work well. Now that Joe's taught us the proper steps, what to do, I think it's going to be a, a, a challenge, but I think it'll definitely work. Give me a ball. One more chance, please. No, no, we had a chance. <laughs> He's having these emotional meltdowns because He's never been told no. These boys ain't used to having consequences, so of course they're going to resist change. So they're going to they're gonna learn. Right. They're going to learn how to deal with that. The next day, what I really wanted to do was talk to the boys about how they felt about their father. And it didn't take long, really, to get an answer. Would you like to play hide-and-seek with Dad? Dad doesn't play hide-and-seek. Dad doesn't play hide-and-seek? When I first met the boys, they told me that they didn't like their father, that all he cared about was work. He never spent any time with them. They never had any fun with him. I was sad for I grew us more. The boys misbehave because they're denied the attention they should be receiving from their father. So I come up with a really good idea that would help improve their behavior and their relationship with their father. So I brought in a board that would visually show the kids exactly how much commitment they would receive from their dad every day with regards to play. All right, I've been talking to the boys about time being spent with you, and they're like, they want more dad time, right? Every day, I want you all to pick something that you're all going to do for the hour. 
At the top, there were lots of activities that the kids can do, and underneath, a disc that would show them that Dad would concentrate solely on the boys and do something that they want to do. An hour every day. If, because of work, you don't get that hour in, you're going to bring it over to the next day. Okay? That sounds good. I like it. I like my dad's new routine. I'm going to put it on the wall up there so that you guys can see that nice and clearly, OK? This is something that will help the kids realize that their dad does love them, that he does want to play with them, that he does care. I think that it's a good idea. It makes me know that I have to stay on top of things. I want the boys to choose. What do you want so to do? we can do this afternoon. To impress the importance of dad spending time with the boys, I just wanted to get him out of the house. Now. What are we going to do? The boys wanted to go over to the park. Good job. And it was just nice to see all three of them having fun, as any father with his son should be. But when I'm playing with Hunter River at the park, it feels great. I want to spend time with my kids. I want to make them happy. I never really learned this from my dad, but in, you've taught me a lot, and I, I, I want to say thank you. You're welcome. I didn't know how to really be a great father. I mean, it sounds like a cop out, but the thing is, no one ever taught me. It's not rocket science. Just play with your children. Give them the time so that you're building a happy home and you've got contented kids. Hey, you boys done homework tonight? It was really wonderful to see Dad spend some downtime with the boys, but whilst it was calm, I wanted to tackle this family's biggest problem, homework. So the first thing I want to do with homework is to be very relaxed. And I went through the steps of being able to create it's an atmosphere that was nice and calm for the boys to study. And then let's place ourselves in a situation here where we can sit next to the child and help. Dad, whenever you are home, I want you to find the time to be at the table. Because if you can do one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be much better. When River does homework, I want to be there to help him. But when he starts acting the way he acts, I just feel there's nothing I can do. And. Um, I guess that's why sometimes I'd rather let mom do the homework. Why don't you sit with one over there? I hate homework, God. River, I'm trying to help you. You gotta let me help you. I need to help you. Good. Over to the side. Hello. Over to the side. River, let me take a look at your paper, please. I'm not done yet. River, look at me, darling. OK, three steps, OK? Look at me, three steps, because look, he's sitting there trying to do it himself because you're not giving him clear direction. OK, talk to him. Clearly and directly, all right? Yeah. River, this is what we're going to do. Three steps to this homework. One, two, and three. Now, the way you're talking to him at the moment is with tone that is if you're, it's, it sounds like you're telling him off. Stop. All right, this is about being encouraging, OK? Yeah. So these boys are more than capable of doing their homework. They just need a little direction. This is what we got to do, OK? Now, that one's minus. It's 22. Mm -hmm. Zero's yeah. yeah. OK, that's good. Now, what we need to do is the second thing that Daddy was talking about, all right? So you go through those with Daddy. Show Boys. him. Oh, good boy. Dad, do the next one, number two. Keep going from there. Set. Very good. What I learned from Joe about doing homework with my kids is that it is possible to break through to a stubborn little boy like mine. Then a nut. That's it. Good boy. Well done. After homework, I thought everything was going OK. But at dinner, the river started to misbehave again. Chickens. Did you sit in there? I'm sitting right here. This is where I choose to sit. Dad sat next to River, and River kicked off. He didn't want his dad sitting there. He wanted to control where his dad sat. Uh, river, this is what's expected from you. You sit your chair back in the place where you're supposed to and eat your dinner. You want the Do not. Do not. Do not shout. You do not throw that. Do not shout. You know, when a kid's really angry, it's better to remain calm rather than feed into that anger and get angry too. Please go out the room. Believe me, it's no fun getting hit by these kids, but it's not going to stop me helping this family. You're getting angry. Jojo's your friend. There's no real magic in knowing how to deal with a child that has anger issues. My main importance with both parents was to allow them to recognise how they were dealing with it now and what it was doing to contribute to the way River was continuing to behave. See how he's trying to get your interaction? He wants you to feed into his anger. River, you don't throw that. Well, if you behave, if you say that, then you set it up. 
The first thing I told Mum and Dad was to remain calm so that temperaments wouldn't get worse. And secondly, to tell River, unless he's calm, he's not going to get the attention he wants or be heard. Because you're hurt. No, you're not allowed in this room while you're behaving that way. You have to be calm to be in this room. Get out! No, you're not allowed in this room while you're behaving that way. When River wanted to spend time with Hunter and Mum at the computer, it gave me a perfect chance to illustrate this principle. Put that down. When he's calmed down... Tell him what behaviour you expect. The two of you together, unite together. As soon as you decide you're going to calm down and be a good boy, then you may be in here. But until then, I don't want you in here. So what River's wanting is his own way and attention. And I taught Mum and Dad that if they can teach River just to calm down, then he'll get what he wants and he'll also be heard. Take a deep breath. I'm going to behave. You're going to behave? Good. Great. Good. Corey and I, we both came together and River realised that we were a team and, and he realised that both of us weren't going to put up with it. We're really pleased to hear he's going to behave. Okay. That whole process was crucial because it will happen again. But as long as they keep following through, they are always going to make River think about the way he behaves and the choices that he makes. Come on. Sure you're, you're right. Well done, the pair of you, OK? I saw something very different here. You laid down those rules and you laid down expectations. Right. And he saw that you were agreeing. You were agreeing. Right. You were on the same page, which was brilliant. So I am going to leave for a few days. I'm going to leave you some homework. Mum. I want you to follow through with discipline. Don't give a hundred chances. Here's one warning and nip it in the bud straight away and follow through. Dad, warnings, low projection, no shouting. And remember, you're in it together. When Joe comes back and sees um, how we've changed and what we've done, I think Joe's going to be very, very proud of us. Thank All right, he's done together. I want to stick to all the things that she's put into place. I think we're going to do great. Right. See you in a few days. OK, right. thank you so much. Right. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. I'm concerned about this family whilst I leave them for a few days. There's still a lot to be sorted out. I just hope that they can keep their sanity before losing their tempers. After leaving this family for several days, I'm more than curious about whether Mum and Dad have held up faults or whether they've gone back to those bad habits again. So, who's looking forward to taking a look at this DPD? A little nervous. A little nervous. OK. I hate this stupid-ass ball! Hunter! Hunter! You, got, you just got a warning. You know what, guys? This is a warning. I'm warning you guys right now. This is your warning. I'm giving you a warning right now. Warning. River, warning! Warning! You can tell me I didn't warn you. River, warning! 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 River! Warning! 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 Look at that. Even the kids are mimicking. Warning! 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 50! What are you thinking? Empty threats lead you back to the same old place you were before I arrived. The place of no control. You have been showing good progress. Don't go back. Don't go back. Yeah. Would you, well, you pick what you want to do first. Hunter, that is good. That's excellent. Draw a line where you think would be a half of an orange. Excellent. Mm. You guys are doing really good. Mm. Nice prize. Oh boy. Let me just pause it there. Seems like that went like a breeze. Yeah, yeah that, that was when I was by myself and that did. Absolute breeze. Yeah. But you've obviously instilled the points of coming together and setting the right mood. Nice note. How do you make something so simple so difficult? It's not easy. You can do this and you know it. No, I'm you're, not. You're good. making this very difficult. You want to be here all day? I thought you were doing the good thing. Oh. Please don't do this to me Hunter? right now. Hunter? Oh, come oh my Hunter. gosh, okay. Hunter. I know it's done. Right, how is your communication there with Hunter? Positive or negative? I guess it's, it's negative. If you feed negativity in the beginning, you, you're going to set up that whole energy. It's about saying, I believe in you. That's my point. Continue to watch. He's doing great, but he's getting frustrated right now. So, work it with him. Exciting. The answer is 
think they know. Right. You of course you know the answer. answer. Okay. Where are you? Oh, is that down here? Put how many more? Nice writing. What are you doing over there? I sat down for one second. I, I didn't think the last she was howling. It was not a, to me. It wasn't a big deal. You walked away. You sat over there, and Lucy jumped in. You talk about him not quitting, and you quit. Good old Lucy will jump in again and save the day. Please do not huff and puff like a twelve-year-old, Curry. Where are you? I am. I am standing up. I'm telling you. To me, it was the last question. It wasn't a big deal. She was helping. Precisely. Him. And that's why you're over there, and that's why your wife is still there. Because it wasn't that important to you. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't see it that way, but that's... Of course that, you don't no, see it that way. Of course you don't, because no. you're selfish. No, that's not true. You're selfish. It has to do with your lack of commitment. You've been getting away with it for too long in this house. So you want to sit here and sulk about the circumstances, then I suggest you take a good look at yourself first because everything that is going on here is due to you. The next clip that we are going to take a look at, Dad, is your energy. OK? Yep. Well, guys, what do you want to do? Why are you guys so difficult? Yeah. You guys, what do you want to play? Yeah! Hunter, why do you do that? Because you always do hard for me. I don't me. try to throw it, and, and so I so you're making me chase it. it. Makes no sense. Come on. Then it's the basketball, Dad. Dad, it's under the car. I know. I don't want to get dirty. Dad, keep I'm trying, the ball. I need to take a break. I'm just I'm tired. Just need to rest for five minutes. Dad, why can't you kick? I'm just tired right now. I'm just feeling ex I'm exhausted for some reason. Go ahead. I'm waiting for it. This is what I saw. A lack of willingness, a lack of commitment, enthusiasm. I'm tired. I don't want to get dirty with the ball. I don't have a lot of energy. Don't. An emotional energy? I mean, where do you think that is? It's up and down. You know, I have good days, I have bad days. I do believe that you have a lot of internal emotional issues. Yeah because I feel that mentally they have you in a place that's heavy and dark. Curry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Please open the door. I don't want to do this. Whilst watching the DVD, I confronted Dad about his lack of energy and interest with the boys. Curry. He left the table in tears, but I wasn't going to let him off the hook. He keeps isolating himself, and it's no good. Curry, please open the door. You are not alone, OK? Do you think that, that you are the first person that I have met, the first father, the first mother? who has had to deal with so much, but I just feel like everything's here. Yeah. See, don't you understand that the way you feel mentally about the issues that you need to address are coming out already with the way you play with your kids? They're manifesting itself through energy. Your lack of enthusiasm. It's because of where you're at mentally, emotionally. There is stuff that needs to be processed. There is stuff that you need to heal from. There is stuff that you need to talk about. You know, I really felt his pain. He can't see the light through the trees because he's not been able to reach out and ask for that help, for that support. Recognise what you're not doing so that we can change it. This is about change. As a father, you need to be there for your children. You need to look them in the eye and tell them you care about them. You need to hug them. I think the biggest thing, like with my father, I don't, never really grabbed me and said, hey, I love you, you know? Yeah. <sighs> to help Corey and his son build a better relationship, I wanted to create an unforgettable memory. Corey, how do you fancy teaching your son how to ride his bike without the stabilizers? I love to. I, I'm, I'm ready. 
Hunter's been wanting to take his trainer wheels off of his bike to ride, and today he was able to do that. You gotta use your arms, okay? Well, at first, when Joe suggested, let's take the training wheels off, I thought, okay. On a flat surface, but this allows him to practice his balance from left to right, right to left. You have to learn how to use your handlebars. If you don't learn how to use your handlebars, you won't be able to do it. And it was so important that they have this time and that Hunter be taught by his father because they don't have a relationship at the moment that is particularly good. If I, if I go like this, see how you start falling? You have to, you have to hold these tight. Okay, so hold these tight. Hold these tight. Hunter's confidence wasn't sky high, and he was worried about falling off of the bike. And so it meant listening to Dad and trusting him on his word so that he would be able to ride his bike by himself. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, let's go. Ready? Go, pedal, come on. It's Hunter. all you now, Hunter. Keep pedaling, go on, keep you can do it. Keep going. Really? Hunter got on his bike and started riding, just thought, wow, he can do it. Hunter was just over the moon. I mean, his face just lit up, and he was just like going in the wind. I mean, it was really beautiful to see. Dad was pleased with what he was seeing, and he realized that he had been a big part of that. And Hunter was beside himself. That was hard. There you go, give me some. That made me very proud when Hunter started riding the bike. Now I understand with the positive reinforcement and the communication, you can get through to anybody. It's all you. Corey never had that, and now I'm realizing why Corey has some of the faults he does, because he didn't have that. And so as much as it's helping Hunter and how happy Hunter is, I can see it in Corey's eyes. I mean, that was huge for him. Come on, Hunter. Do not stop. Keep going. You're doing amazing. Awesome. Keep going, Hunter. You're doing fantastic. So having go, go, go. Dad teach Hunter how to ride his bike will go a long, long way, because he'll remember that his father taught him how to ride his bike. Yeah, this, this has been priceless. Like, I can't thank you enough. This is, I'm just so excited because I, I'm going to take everything and I'm going to do this. I would like to tell Joe that this has just been a huge family change. I think you're a fantastic lady. Um, you really know your stuff. I really appreciate you. And you have helped our family tremendously. And, and I can't give you enough thanks. Bye, Rupa. You want to give me one of those high fives? Yeah. Do you want, OK. Go on, bud. Ready? Easy. All right, OK, give me, give me a high five. Give me a low five. Give me a big five. Very grateful that Joe came into our life. She's made a huge difference in our family. I think she's wonderful. Thank you so yeah, you much. Are. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, you are. You are. Take care of yourself, okay? I will. I will. Okay. Keep up the work, hey. Work. Work. You're welcome. The time's flown by with this family. There's been much intense work, but I do know that they have the tools and the techniques and a more broader understanding of why things happened in their family and why it got to the stage that it did. And the, the greatest thing that came out of working with this family was communication. Thank you, Jojo. Did you have fun, Riv? Watch out, he put your water on top there, Clay. I really think this whole experience has been a wake-up call. You know, I think it's going to take a while, but I think there's going to be a lot more change. <laughs> now that I look back, I realize I was selfish. I can't turn back and I want to put a smile on my kids' faces. I think it's an amazing gift what Joe did, making Corey try to become the father figure that the boys want. They want two, three, smile. I believe with time, things will change, and I can see the change already in, in my kids. Yeah. My dad plays with us more now. He's going higher and higher. He's going. Time with dad's fun. <laughs>